please welcome Marion. Well, thanks, Jeff, and thank you all for turning up today. Um, every business, your business, every one of them has a story, just as our business has a story. <coughs> we had a dream. We thought that we would like to bring a new product to the Australian market, plantation shutters. What we had was four Ps. We had people, the family. We had product, the plantation shutter. We had the place, we had a four car garage at home. And we had a passion. What we didn't have was money, no business training, no marketing experience, and no customers. This is where we started. This is in the industrial estate in the Blue Mountains in Lawson. We lived in the industrial estate. We threw the chickens out of this house so that we could move in. And that's the garage where our business started. This is what we were making. This was our, this was our dream, that we would put this product in people's homes. At that stage, we only thought of putting them timber shutters inside windows because that reduces the heat, reduces the glare, reduces the fade. And so this was our passion, that we could produce a product that would enhance Australian living. This is where we worked. Um, this is Bruce. We had to learn how to put a shutter together, how we were going to make it, but this is what we did. Gail was our extraordinary painter. We actually outgrew the, the garage at home, so there was an empty factory just around the corner. So we actually financed ourselves into that factory. We then, we did fill that factory, and we did fill a factory unit across the road. We went and there was an interbuild in Sydney, the very first interbuild in Sydney. This was a really big deal. Oh, we had all the confidence in the world. So we said, oh, we'll go to interbuild. And so we made a little homemade stand. We thought we were pretty smart. We made this little homemade stand and we put all our product up until we knew nothing. I picked stuff out of the bush and took it because it was a bare corner there. So we arrived down with our little homemade stand and our old, our old van, walked in, there was a name and X, there was all these international companies <laughs> with their big sophisticated stands and their forklifts and, and their people in suits and all this and we thought, oh my goodness, what have we done? Anyway, we had our little corner and we were a new product. So one day at that exhibition, we clocked more visitors on our stand than any other stand in the show. Yay, we won an award. Um, so, but we were so homegrown in this big sophisticated stand. But we met a lot of people, we introduced a lot of people to something that they hadn't seen before. After the show, I'm sitting in the office and I get a phone call. It was Channel 9. And they say, we're starting a new show on television. And the new show was Our House. And that was the very first home improvement show on television. That was the beginning of an unbelievable journey. Just the experience of having the television people work with us was an unbelievable experience for a little family group of people in the Blue Mountains. Rebecca Gilling, Gilling came and she flew in in a helicopter and, and, and all the photographers, everybody was there. There was a big crew. They spent a whole day with us. Would you get that today? They spent a whole day. They then went and visited customers 
that we had done work for in Sydney and they filmed in their homes and talked to the customers. We set up places, of course, interstate, all as a result of this exposure. We had an office in Perth, we had an office in Adelaide. They weren't run by us, but they were affiliated to us. So we did, we spread around the country and um, it was pretty exciting. Um, so we outgrew the Blue Mountains. So we then had to find somewhere else we would set up. Well, the Central Coast was the place we chose because it was affordable. Same scenario, how will we ever fill this factory? So here's the big entry factory we bought. Um, anybody that's been to it today, it covers the inside of the shed, covers up more than half an acre. So it's a reasonable sized shed. Um, we had a separate office block. We lived in the <coughs> office block for 12 months. That was fine. Um, and we did everything as you do in a small business. We then got a taste for these shows and, and how we could get to the market with our product through shows. So we, we have done design X shows when they were fashionable um, and we would talk to people. In the early days, we were known as Sydney Plantation Shutters um, because we were retailing. So this was our Sydney Plantation Shutters crew. That was how we presented ourselves. It really was unwieldy. We could not manage it. We had to sit back and say, what are we going to do? We cannot manage this. We were selling a lot of product, but we were taking responsibility for everything. So Shutters would go to Perth and we'd get a phone call from a customer and she'd say, oh, the installer's forgotten to put a screw in one of the hinges. That would all come through to us. So we had to really seriously look at our business and make some hard decisions. And we decided we would walk away from retail. We would stop doing all of that. There were people out there that had proven to us that they could sell our product. So we outsourced the sale and the installation, as it were, of our product. And so then we had to manufacture, we had to be prepared to do more mass-produced type work, lower margins. And we have constantly won awards. We don't make a big, we probably don't promote that as much as we should. Um, we have won awards from the very beginning right up to today. Well, we went down this path of being a wholesaler and we gave away the sales of our organisation. Now, are we going to go the next step? Are we going to go offshore and buy product and ship it through our good name and out to our network? Didn't sit comfortably with me at all. Virtually, I would close down a business and open another one. Didn't fit with my values, didn't fit with the family values. I just could not see just saying to staff, you've been wonderful, you've, you've worked with us and we've had this wonderful life together. Oh well, we're going to stop that life and we're going to go on and do, do something different now. Just couldn't do it. So I had to really think about it more than just emotionally. So we decided, well, what are we really good at? We really are good at designing, making, and servicing customers. So sales started dropping, our business was shrinking, and we decided we would go back to the future. We would go back to our roots. We would find a market that would pay for what they get. We would get margins back into our business by servicing 
a new market. We went from high volume, low margins to low volume, high margins. And it's taken a long time, but that's where we're at today. Grand Designs in 2011 was a big one for us. Grand Designs was brilliant because we knew that the customers going to Grand Designs were not going to be price conscious and they were looking for something unique. And unique is what we do. Big round ones in a club in their skylight, these, these are six metres up in the air and it's about six metres wide. This is, a, this is King's Cross Hotel. So they sort of said, well, yeah, your product's beautiful, but it's a bit too soft and a bit too easily damaged. Our patrons can get a bit rough. So, really? So we made that out of a special harder timber that we sourced for them. And then this here is another club. They had these beautiful big glass pyramids outside, but in summertime, you can imagine the heat that that trapped. And they're sort of going, our patrons can't sit there. So we put timber shutters inside it for them. So Grand Designs was really good for us to get into that customised market. We still today have the wholesalers. We still have that wholesale market that, that is still feeding through our factory and that tends to be our bread and butter. Um, there's still, like I said, um, half of those people from way back in the beginning are still buying our product from us. Lots of them do offer other products on Windows as well but we still make for them regularly. Um, but this work is trade work that we deal direct and it is the real one-offs. We work direct with architects and builders and designers in Sydney. I will work with them around the country but we don't have installers based on the ground there to help them with site work. But this job here, we actually had to bend the aluminium to the curve because they wanted an aluminium frame with nice big timber blades in it. So we had to work out our bending of the aluminium to make sure that we had the box section, we had to fix it all. It was, it was fun. As you can tell, Gail has taken the mantle and she looks after now the new part of the business. Um, so the key learnings is what I had gone on to before um, and I talked about values. Um, you've got the impression that people are key to us. Profit in a business is essential but not every decision can be made by profit alone. You don't make a profit from keeping your place clean. Uh, we ensure that we have the best product or solution for the customer's needs and we have it properly costed. The best customer service experience and have it properly costed. We're realistic about lead time and we're honest to our customers. We have a system whereby we can tell them when they will get their shutters and um, we keep to that. We never offer discounts and we communicate everything completely in quotes. The byproduct of this is profit. We practice continue improvement. That's with our people, with our systems, plant equipment, product and research. Planning is important because it makes you look at your business and it needs to be well thought through. The plan must be simple so that it can be well communicated and understood by everybody. We have always needed to be flexible in our planning. So we don't write a big business plan because remember, we have no training in business. These are just things we've learned along the way. And all we talk about is the strategies who's going to be responsible for them and what's the result we want and what's the time frame. That's our business plan. Um, lifestyle, small business is about lifestyle. I don't mean lying around the beach. It's about being in charge of all your own decisions, about taking responsibility, about not having to be answerable to somebody else and, and having trouble with communication it goes the other way when it's your own business, it's other people have the trouble with you. But I have to congratulate you people that you as small businesses have joined an organisation and that you communicate with each other and that you share. I learnt that being in small business 
I was totally isolated and our business was isolated because you do, you think 24-7 about your business. So congratulations to you all that you are such brilliant business people that you get together and you understand and you share that. You have problems, you can guarantee the person sitting next to you has got the same problem, but they have may have a different solution. And you so you get ideas from each other and you you do. It's extremely valuable and it removes a lot of stress. I was unprepared for the responsibilities in education that I have enjoyed in business. My mantra through life is to take my journey one step at a time, exploring on the way, moving to the future, and rarely do I look back. Leading a business is about staying true to your values, using common sense, logic, strong decision making, and having no fear. So I'm sure that you all go out of here with all those qualities. Thank you very much. shutters. They're architecturally beautiful to look at, but it's the quality and workmanship that goes into this. There's nobody else in Australia doing this. We don't just churn shutters out of the factory. Every person in the factory takes pride in what they do, and they handle every piece of wood multiple times to ensure that it is all to the best quality that's available. Architects have very specific visions that they have for their clients and they like to make sure that their visions come to life. They don't like spending time being creative and then having to compromise. With this project, with the concept, the shutters were a, a, a key feature of the fit out. Uh, they, they kind of tied the whole thing together and you know, if we didn't get them right then it was going to have a you know, significant impact on the overall look and feel of the space. There isn't too many um, shutter companies around that specialise in shutters but are also willing to, to go to the degree of customising them specifically to meet the, um, the design requirements. They're just architecturally beautiful to look at. If you look at that and you see the step down, you're looking at the plain blades and then you look at that, that's another structured piece of workmanship, craftsmanship. Sustainability actually crosses all facets of, of open shutters. We use Western Red Cedar, which is from managed forests. Open shutters themselves, the louvers, once they're put in an environment, it helps the sustainability of that space. The applications are endless insofar as integration with design, whether it be for household, commercially, or exterior. Anything can be done architecturally. We've been making shutters in Australia for over 20 years now. Um, we've done a lot of work on trying different materials, different paint systems, different hardware, hinges, tracking. Um, we've worked very, very closely with an Australian paint company to make sure that our paint system is actually durable for our harsh environment. Open shutters work tirelessly with us to, to make sure we we're happy with the result. A lot more than window dressing, it actually functionally works really well. Yeah. These people, they just know what they're doing and Jens and his team are just perfectionists, they really are.